My Heritage is based out of Israel. They have offices in Lehigh, Utah, and LA, California. It is an international database. It functions as a social networking site as well, and they claim 97% accuracy. They have 80 million members worldwide. They have 6.85 billion historical documents and records, including the world's largest collection of newspapers dating back to 1609. One million historical records are being added daily, and two million family tree profiles added on an average every day. They have 42 different languages, with access to historical records in any language translated into the language of query. Other benefits like making beautiful charts, calendars, books, DNA testing, apps for mobile devices, and much more. If you have an LDS account, you can get MyHeritage for free. Insert FamilySearch.org slash Partner Access in the address bar of Google, then click under MyHeritage, Join for free. Click on Continue for your free MyHeritage account, and it will walk you through the steps. You will create a username and password that we use every time you go into MyHeritage. You will get the most benefit from MyHeritage by entering in your family tree. You can do it in one of three ways. One is a JetCom if you have your tree in another program other than Family Search because Family Search does not do JetComs. Or number two, you can add three or four generations starting with you and let MyHeritage find the rest of your people in your lines through smart matches and record matches. Or if you're a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, you can link your tree from Family Search into MyHeritage. Any changes you make in Family Search will be carried over into MyHeritage when you give the command to sync. Clicking here will tell you all the ins and outs of syncing. It will bring up over eight generations of your ancestors and up to three generations of your descendants. Up to two generations of descendants of those close ancestors and up to one generation of descendants of your distant ancestors. Once you have done this, the program will remind you when you have synced last and how long it took. I would suggest that you sync at night after you have finished using your computer because it may take an hour and a half depending on your tree and you can sync again in the future by clicking on the Sync Now icon. If you already had a tree in MyHeritage, it will make a new tree for you and that is the one you will continue to sync to and work in. There are a few slight upgrades in the synced version. I am demonstrating the newer version, which is a sync tree from Family Search. This is a home page, and you can go right into your tree here, or just your photos, or see some fun statistics about your family tree. I'm not going to tell you every detail on my heritage, as it will make this video too long. My goal is to give you the basics, and then you can go explore some of the other fun stuff. Click on the drop-down arrow here to choose which tree you're working on. Looking at the toolbar, here you will see all your smart matches and all your record matches. And if you had a DNA test, you would go here to see all your DNA matches. Under your name, you can change your settings or profile or privacy or logout. The help menu is here where you can see tutorials on MyHeritage and learn about the functions of MyHeritage. Under Home, you can see Family Statistics or invite others to see your tree. Under Family Trees, you can go into all your photos, import a tree from another place into MyHeritage, or manage your trees. Clicking on More, you can see where your ancestors lived under Pedigree Map, print out books and charts, see mistakes and sources in your tree. Discoveries uncovers people who may be related or part of your tree. DNA is all the things you see here. Health tab is new and gives you health risk information along with your DNA. And last is where you would do research on an ancestor and filter that research. I will explain more about that in uh, some of these things as we go along. You can view your tree up and down or in family view, or you can go to pedigree view, which is what it's in now, or you can see an alphabetical list of the people in your tree. The zoom in out button is here. Hovering your mouse over a name will bring up a pencil. Click on it to bring up a box by which you can quickly edit the person's information and then click OK. Clicking on their name will bring up this summary box and you can see his personal identification number. You can go into his profile page to see more information, do a quick edit, add family members, and under more you can view his tree, edit a photo, connect to an existing person, remove connection, or delete this person. 
Here you can add a photo, and if you want to edit anything, hover your mouse over a fact to bring up a pencil icon, and you can edit that fact. You can see what smart matches and record matches they have, or you can research this person. Click on his profile page. On the top half of this profile page, you can see how he is related to you. You can research him here. You can edit his profile, view the tree or view and pedigree map. Here are his uh, records or sources. A green check mark means that source is already added to his profile. A brown question mark means that source has yet to be determined by you. Click on them to add them to your sources if they are correct and add more photos here. Going down the profile page, you can add all sorts of miscellaneous information here. If you wanted to add a source that didn't come from my heritage, click Edit beside Source Citations. At the very bottom, you can click on Add Another Source Citation. Above that is an example of an open source citation. All the sources open up like this when you click Edit, so you can edit any one of them if desired. Save and Continue or Save and Close. At the bottom of the profile page, you can add a biography, web links, and videos, or write your memories. When you click on Research This Person from the profile page or summary box, the program automatically populates all this person's information so you don't have to type it in. It will bring up tons of results under each of these categories. You're just seeing census records here, but if my screen were longer, you could see all the types of records listed here family trees, birth, marriage, and death photos, military, and so forth. So I suggest you click on the Summary tab so those records go into categories. If you wanted to just see a military record or a marriage record, for instance, it would be easier to find. The Results tab has all the records too, but it doesn't put them into categories. While we're on the subject of researching, if your person is not in the tree, go to Research fill in the blanks and put a check mark beside with translation so the program will translate a foreign language if that is where you're searching. You can let the program find results in all categories or you can filter the results on the right by just say clicking on photos or birth records. You can also click on a country. Clicking on these little drop downs gives you the choices of how you want to research if you want the exact match or similar match and so forth. One of the things I really like about MyHeritage is if you are searching a name in a book or a newspaper, it will bring up the text surrounding your ancestor's name and highlight your ancestor's name. So what are smart matches and record matches? Clicking on a green circle beside a name will bring up the other user's trees. Someone else might have researched this line and have information you don't have. Other trees do not count as official sources, but it might give you a place to start searching. Record matches are official records, that is, they are any government or church records that can help verify birth, marriage, or death. So clicking on a smart match of a green circle of a person, I would first see this page. My tree is on the left, all the other trees are on the right. There are 11 pending matches. Choose one of them by clicking on Review Match. This person's tree on the right had a sister, Ruth Elizabeth, which I might want to research more since she was not a person I had in this family. Scrolling down the page, if most of the people and dates and places match up, I would confirm this a match. The program then lets me exchange in information on each person in the family. Click on the arrows to bring information you want into your tree. Also add any missing family members if you desire. At the bottom of this page, if you like all the other submitters' information, you could bring over all the information over from everyone in this person's tree with one click here, which says Extract All Information. When finished, save to your tree. Going down the page, I can compare my tree to the other submitters' tree. I can write a comment or reject the match. Clicking on a brown circle will bring up record matches. I will add the 1900 census. The two records above look like they are trees, but they have sources attached to them. Click on Review Match. This page is too long to show in one slide, so here is the top of the page. 
Here is the bottom of the census record. You can zoom in or out on the original and you can see the indexed record here. Click confirm if you think this supports your person. Then at the very bottom of the page you will see other records relating to your ancestors. They call it record detective. The more records you attach to a person, the more records the search engines are able to find and you can attach these records as well. Like smart matches, the record matches allow you to move information from the record as you add this source to each person in the record. Source citation is hidden unless you click here to open it up. You always want to add the source citation. When finished, click on Save to Tree. So what is an instant discovery? An instant discovery is a package of family history information that you can apply in one click. If an individual in your family tree connects to a branch in another family tree, you'll be alerted about this and then you can choose to add everyone in that branch, up to 40 or 50 people your tree in your tree who is not already there, rather than manually adding the people one by one. These branches are from people that have researched this branch and can have sources, pictures and dates and so forth. One advantage of doing this is that once in your tree, the search engines can go to work finding other records and family trees that can not only help verify those people, but maybe be able to add other family members. After you click on Instant Discoveries, it will bring up a list. Click on one. Confirm that these are the same people. Click once here and all these people automatically go into your tree. If you don't think it does belong to your tree, you can uh, reject the discovery by clicking here. It will show you these new people in your tree and you can go in and begin collecting information on them. Just some fun miscellaneous things to know in MyHeritage. Under the Home and Family Statistics, you can see the ratio of genders in your tree, living versus deceased, and relationship status. You can click here or here to see more. You can see birth statistics, places of birth, oldest and youngest and so forth. Marriages, children in a family. Click on pedigree map. Click on a place. On the left are all the states and counties that people in my tree come from. On the right are all the places listed in my tree specific to what I click on the left. So if I click on Pocahontas County it will bring up names of people in my tree who lived in Pocahontas County. Clicking on a name will bring up that person's box and I could edit the place. When I click on the orange dot, it tells me I have 36 references for Pocahontas, West Virginia. Consistency Checker is a new feature and a great resource for picking up inconsistencies in your tree. Things like child born after death of a parent or a parent too young or too old when having a child. This feature is very helpful in finding those mistakes so you can fix them or ignore them if it is correct. So to sum up the basics of MyHeritage, you want to fill in the blanks and grow your tree with smart matches and instant discoveries, and then verify them with record matches and custom research called super searches. This concludes this presentation. You might want to take a moment to visit the BYU webpage for more videos and webinars at the address listed on the bottom of the screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.